If everything goes to plan, this might be the first in a series of short videos summarizing facts about individual draconic species, their biology, habitat, and the way they live. But right now it's a bit of an experiment to see if I can properly figure out video and audio editing. Also, please forgive the audio quality, I don't have a good microphone and I'm recording this on an iPad. The dragon species we're going to be looking at today is called the Whiskered Umbrella Amphitheer. The Whiskered Umbrella Amphitheer is a strange species of cave-dwelling dragon that seems to make up for its lack of size or outstanding abilities by having several highly specialized adaptations to its environment. Measuring about two meters in length and two and a half in wingspan, this dragon lacks limbs other than wings completely, placing it in the unofficial group known as amphitheers, or limbless winged draconids. The whiskered umbrella amphitheer's almost complete lack of limbs is long with flexible wings supported by quill-like structures rather than the finger bones, as is the norm among draconids, allows it to squeeze into tight crevices in its cave environment to escape predators or pursue prey. A really bizarre snout, which is very narrow and has a rather extreme bend in it. Besides making this dragon look as if it's run into a wall, this specialized snout allows it to reach far into narrow holes that may have bends in them, as well as lever up large rocks in order to reach its prey of smaller, burrowing cave dragons, insects, snakes, and bats. Living in almost total darkness, the whiskered umbrella amphitheer has relatively small and underdeveloped eyes, as they don't need to see well. However, it possesses a very, very long, sensitive tongue which it uses in conjunction with a highly developed Jacobson's organ, giving it an extremely precise sense of smell and touch. In an odd example of convergent evolution, the frills of this dragon are actually shaped to guide sound into its ear canals, effectively giving it a pair of false ears and very good hearing. This species also has two rows of very long lateral spines, as well as the impressive whiskers which are its namesake. These consist of modified quills tipped with sensory organs, which let the amphitheer sense movement in the air, giving it a very good sense of its dark surroundings and what might be living in them. While this dragon is not a social or flocking species, large groups of them may congregate around a common food source such as a large colony of bats. They will generally not fight amongst themselves so long as food is present, and will tolerate other species of animals as well, so long as they are not seen as predators. When resting, the species will use the modified claw organ at the end of its tail to hang onto the ceiling and will coil around a stalactite, pulling its wings around itself and giving the appearance of a folded umbrella, hence the other part of the name. The courtship ritual of the whiskered umbrella amphitheer consists of presenting rocks, pebbles, crystals, or bits of bone to the potential mate. Some objects are considered more desirable than others, but there seems to be no obvious system to it. The mated pair will lay oblong, soft-shelled eggs into a hole or crevice, which they will then seal completely with a mixture of bones, pebbles, saliva, and regurgitated bat fur. They will then abandon the nest and go their separate ways. Around three months later, the eggs will hatch and the hatchlings will bury their way outwards into the cave, eating insects until they are large enough to pursue bigger prey. Interestingly, about 80% of whiskered umbrella amphitheers are born lacking pigment, and are a pale pinkish white with bright pink wings and frills. While the trait for albinism and leucism disappear quickly in other environments, because these animals cannot camouflage, the lightless environment of the species' habitat means that the trait can survive. This fascinating species of dragon is not dangerous to humans and has even been known to start following spelunkers around after being fed repetitively. However, one should still exercise caution around this animal, mainly for the reason that it is in the middle of its respective food chain and can attract larger predators to the area.